Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be about my photo editing process from importing to sorting to the develop edits to export. So it's gonna be a longer video, so uh, settle in, uh, grab a beverage and or a snack or maybe even a meal, uh, depending on how long this takes. I will leave uh, chapter markers down below so you can go to the individual uh, portion of the video that's most interesting to you. Uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be working in Adobe Lightroom Classic. That's the software I've been using since 2004. But I think the processes and strategies I'm going to discuss in here will apply and translate to most other editing software. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, I know this process uh, of the way I do things has evolved over time. It's even evolved, I noticed, in the past six months, especially when I get to sort and it kind of starts to overlap with the edit. I'll explain that when we get there. So in this video, what I'm going to do is do a live edit of some photos that I recently photographed and they were in last week's video. You can see those in the link down below. So I have not seen these photos yet, except for maybe a quick review on the back of the camera. So this will be kind of live and in response to what I'm seeing. Uh, I will skip portions or do fast forward. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, I'll leave uh, chapter markers down below so you can jump to the second segment that most interests you. So let's get started. Grab your memory card and a beverage and follow along. So I'm over here in Lightroom Classic in the import module and here's what we're going to do to get started. I've got my photos uh, ready to rock and roll that I want and you'll see there's uh, 196 of them. So this is from a recent uh, outing to downtown Bellevue for some street photography. Uh, I'll walk you through my import process, a little bit about my thought process behind that. Uh, speaking of thought processes and how I do things, I do have a couple playlists about Lightroom videos and I'll leave links to those below. I have a, a one that kind of covers uh, what I'm going to do today in a, even a little more depth than that. Uh, and I have another uh, playlist that updates for each of the uh, years that Adobe updates uh, features in Lightroom Classic. So one of the things I like so much about Adobe Lightroom Classic is that it helps me in the very first step, the import step, it helps me organize and set things up the way I want with my photos. I do this as part of the import process. You could do it later or do it in a bunch of different ways. I know this way works for me. This is the way I teach students at Highline College and uh, they seem to get it and appreciate it. Uh, I think it's kind of a, a good mix of spending a moment to do something and being efficient about doing it. So here we go. We'll get started with our photos that we now have selected. My next step, I do three steps in the import process. Uh, step number one I do is to save my photos to a permanent location from the memory card. So I don't copy my photos first to the computer. I leave them on the memory card and then I use Lightroom to manage this whole uh, uh, create a new copy of the photo, import it to Lightroom, and organize in Lightroom. So here we go. So uh, again, uh, everybody does uh, for photo organization differently. My suggestion to you is however you do it is to be consistent in uh, your organizational structure. So for photos like this, what I do is I have an out and about for folder for each year. And then I have a, a location and then I'll make a new folder in that for the date the photos were taken. Uh, for the date uh, naming convention, I'll use uh, month first and then dash and then the specific day, which was uh, when I'm recording this yesterday. So this would have been the 17th. And then I'll click create on that then click choose. So that's the location Lightroom is going to save these photos as it copies them to the computer. Next step uh, in file handling, I'm going to create a collection or add to a collection in this case uh, inside of Lightroom. This is how Lightroom organizes its photos inside a Lightroom. Uh, most software calls this albums. In fact, Lightroom CC calls this organizational structure albums. Um, but one of the things I like about Lightroom Classic that CC is missing is that in Lightroom Classic, I can have 
a, a collection of collections that are called collection sets. So for example, in here, I have a collection set for out and about 2023. And then I have my Bellevue collection, which contains all the photos from Bellevue for 2023. Uh, so I really like this in a Lightroom Classic. Uh, so that's going to be the location where they're going to go. And then the next step I do is in file renaming uh, using the template custom name dash sequence, what I'm going to do is give these new these photos new names. And my naming convention is usually uh, location, maybe a little description, and then the date uh, in year, month, day format. Let me show that to you. So for me, I'm going to do uh, downtown Bellevue for the name. And then uh, I'm going to throw in Misty because it was a rainy day. Uh, and this was 2023-02-17. Uh, so one thing you'll notice, I don't use keywords in my, uh, I don't add keywords to my photos in this part of the process, or in fact, any part of the process. Uh, with 196 photos here, I just don't have time or energy to do that. I try and do that with the name, at least gets me close enough. Most of the time I kind of remember, okay, this photo was in February and I can go find it with the name. So. For, in my experience, this is enough uh, organizational structure and key, not keywording, but naming that helps me find photos later that even a year or two or 10 from now, I can find these photos, I think, pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead and click the import button, then I'll uh, fast forward through this process and we'll catch up at the sorting process, which is the next step. So once import is complete, I'm going to move to the next step, which uh, is the sorting, culling uh, process. And to do that, I'm going to use a rating system. But before I do that, a couple more thoughts about and information about these photos. Uh, all the photos I, uh, that I've imported are in the raw format. Uh, and additionally, for this uh, set of photos, what I was doing is uh, kind of following along with the assignment I give to students in artistic photography class, which is to do abstract and minimal photos. So uh, most of the photos you're going to see are kind of going to fall into that category. There will be some more traditional street style photos in here as well, but uh, most of these will be abstract and minimal. So uh, currently Lightroom is building smart previews, which are uh, how it will uh, send the photos to the cloud if you want to synchronize to other devices, which is something I take advantage of. But we can begin this process uh, while it's still building that. So here's how I go uh, to do this. So my process for doing this is to start with photo number one, switch to the develop module, uh, gives me a large view of the photo, and then here is the next step. Uh, my process is to use the star rating system, and I keep it simple. Uh, I either give the photo a five star or no stars. And my thought behind that is, uh, to, again, keep it simple, make this fast. So what I'm going to do is go through all these photos, all 196 of them, and for every photo, I'm going to have a reaction. It's, it's going to be yes or maybe, and then I'll hit the five key, which will give it a five star rating. And if it's a no, I'll just go to the next photo. So this first process of rating photos is going to give me more photos than I'm going to end up with, but I'm okay with that. One of the advantages I like about uh, this method is I see every photo a couple of times uh, and it can helps me fine tune the collections of what photos I'm going to edit and, and I hopefully won't miss ones that are on first reaction, maybe not quite the one, but in comparison to others, uh, they work out really well. So anyway, let's go through this process. So here what I do is I have my hands on the keyboard. My left hand is over the number five key. My right hand is on the arrow keys to go to one photo or, or the other. So starting with this first photo, it's a maybe, so I'm going to hit number five. I have a couple that are like this, so I'm just going to skip the others, knowing that I can come back if I need to. I have a new angle here. We'll hit number five on that because that's a maybe as well. Ooh, reflections, puddles, uh, maybe for now. Uh, I think this one is a goof. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Close up of reflection tape on a, on a traffic cone. I kind of like that. I like that too. Uh, this pretty rose blooming outside of Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> Gotta love Cheesecake Factory, so I'll hit five on that. Um, so I'm gonna go through, oops, goof, um, all these. I'm not gonna, 
I'll fast forward through this part of it, but the whole idea is initial quick reaction because that's when people see your photos, they are looking at them quickly and judging whether they're gonna look at it longer or go to the next photo. So I'm gonna go through that and do this whole process. I'll speed this up, but I'll be back in a minute or two. So once I've got all my photos selected in the first pass, my next step is I'm gonna go look at just the rated photos, the photos I give the five star to, and I'm gonna go to filters off and then change that to rated. So now I have 93 out of instead of 190, so I've still got a lot of photos. So here's my next step, and, and I've kind of modified this. What I used to do is I'd go through the whole sequence again, uh, in this case the 93 photos, and I would uh, remove some. So what I do instead now is I start the edit with the very first photo, uh, apply the edits I want, and then use that as a baseline in helping me decide which of the remaining photos to keep or remove. So uh, let's talk a little bit about my editing process, uh, how I work in uh, the develop module in Lightroom Classic. My general process is to think about the, the vibe, the look, the feel uh, that I want for this kind of batch of photos. So in doing that, what I'm doing is thinking about a color, thinking about exposure, thinking about overall a mood again for the day. This day was a very misty day. So I want it to feel a little gloomy, a little, a little darker, a little moodier. So I'll probably go lean in a little to the blues on the colors. I'll lean into a little bit of extra contrast uh, on to increase that kind of mood. I'll probably add texture clarity dehaze to get a little more crunchiness in the photos. Yes, that's a thing. And uh, so that's my general philosophy on how I approach and edit. So let me show you the specific steps I use to do that uh, with the this first photo that we're going to work on and then I'll use that as a baseline for the rest. All right, so here we go. So starting back here at photo number one, I'll start in the basic panel uh, up at the top. I'll go to the First thing I do is apply uh, a Fujifilm film simulation. I uh, photograph on the Fujifilm X-H2S. So I'm gonna apply uh, one of my preferred uh, film simulations, which is classic Chrome. So that's the first thing I do. I like that look. Next thing I'll do uh, is uh, go ahead and work through the basic panel, then down through um, the tone curve and HSL color and color grading. At this point, generally, I don't crop, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, this method works for me. Uh, borrow and use what works for you and makes sense, uh, but uh, everybody has a different way of doing this. It's like making chocolate chip cookies from the back of the, the, the recipe on the, on the chip wrapper. Uh, even though we all have the same recipe and probably use the same ingredients, everybody's chocolate chips taste different chocolate chip cookies that is. Okay, anyway, here we go back to this. All right, so uh, starting with color, I'm gonna leave everything alone here. Maybe take the tint just a little bit more towards the green um, and then go to exposure and contrast. I generally turn up contrast on photos like this somewhere oftentimes between 20 and 30. Uh, highlight shadows, whites and blacks. I'll probably make the blacks darker as a starting point. Again, going for the mood I'm looking at. Uh, I might open the shadows just a little bit here. Do I want to? Yeah, I talk to myself a lot when I'm doing this. So anyway, I'm gonna walk through the steps on the first one. I won't do that on every one. Uh, I'll pull out some example ones probably along the way, but we'll speed through this going forward. Uh, I'll probably leave everything else alone in the tone, come down to texture. My kind of default texture is 30. I like that on especially man-made things. Uh, textural things. Uh, clarity, I usually go to about plus 10 or 15. Dehaze, I'll pull up a little bit to somewhere between eight and 10. Um, that's a look I like, adds a little crunchiness. Vibrance and saturation, again, a look I like is to, I increase vibrance and generally pull saturation down a little bit. So again, my general go-to is about plus 30 on vibrance, 
And then I pull saturation down about minus 10. Um, again, uh, something to be aware of, all these values I'm giving you work on this photo, although some of these things I kind of tend to do the same thing. And you're probably asking, why don't I make a preset? Uh, and the reason for that is, this is just how I work, that's part of it. Uh, and a preset, I think for me, kind of gets me into lazy mode. Uh, it just one click and move to the next, although I'm kind of gonna do that with what I show you next. So yeah, just, just <laughs> trust me on this. Also, another thing to factor in is uh, your camera. If you're not using a Fuji camera, uh, the, the way you would balance all these things out will likely be different. The, the values you enter to get a certain look will be different because of the way the, uh, the sensor is exposed, the way the files are saved. So it's all different on every different camera brand. So uh, a vibrance of 30 and a saturation of minus 10 will give a different color result on a Fuji camera than it would on a Canon, Sony, Nikon, Panasonic, all the others. So there you go. So uh, back into tone curve, I'll do a little edit here. And the edit I do here generally is I'll pull the shadows, the blacks up just a little bit, about 10 or 12, and then I'll do a gentle S curve where I pull the shadows down at that point and push the highlights up just a little bit. Uh, it's pretty subtle. Uh, I mostly do it because I, I like it. it. It's a very, very subtle change but it works for me. All right, next down to HSL color. Um, generally, most photos what I do is I just play with the hues a little bit. I nudge the colors around. Uh, again, personal preference here. So for me, I take the reds and the oranges and the yellows all to about minus 12, minus 13. The green I push up to about plus 12. Aqua and blue, I go about minus 12, minus 13. Uh, it's a look I like. Um, yeah, it's uh, like the clothes I wear, the way I cut my hair, all those things. Personal preference. Speaking of personal preference, I'm going to do some more of that down in color grading. Uh, in the color grading panel, I work on the big color wheel, so I do that by clicking on the, uh, the small icons above. And so I start with the shadows just because I do, and I take the hue. My hue for shadows is almost always... 206. Yes, I have a specific number. And then uh, how much do I increase it? Uh, it depends on the photo. It's usually about 12 to 18, somewhere in there, 12 to 20. Um, the hue, I generally start with a hue on the, on the mid-tones of around 36. 36. Uh, and I'll tell you the story behind the numbers in a minute. Uh, and then the saturation, I'll pull that up a little bit. Again, I'm going to probably keep these a little muted uh, than I normally would. Again, I'm going to add uh, kind of a golden orange to the mid-tones and a little pinkish yellow to the highlights. Again, it's a look I like, but I'm going to keep them relatively lower because I want the overall vibe of this photo, this photo session to lean into the cooler tone. So uh, next, I'm going to go to the highlights in the in the color grading and I'll go to about 24 here on the hue and the saturation is again relatively low, somewhere around 12 or 13. Uh, trivia moment for you, how I got to these numbers on the hue. Uh, for highlights and, and mid-tones is six is my favorite number. So to remember what kind of numbers I like, I just make them multiples of six. So 36 for the mid-tones get me into that golden tone. And then uh, 24 is kind of on the little bit of the pinkish side on the highlights. There you go. A little Michael nerdy moment. So, all right. So that gets me started there. Um, I usually add a little vignetting. Uh, that's the other thing I'll usually do. A little amount on vignette, my, minus 10 or so, just to get me started. I don't mind that. I'll add a little noise reduction. I think all this batch of photos was at ISO 800. So I'll take the luminance noise, just go to about 30. Again, as a starting point, I don't play with sharpening too much. Uh, if I do, I'll remember to uh, increase the masking so it's only sharpening certain things. You can see the mask by holding down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC as you increase uh, the masking. I usually go between 60 and 80. That way, uh, where it's showing in white is the things that are being sharpened, so it's just sharpening details rather than sharpening everything. And if you know on Fuji stuff, uh, Lightroom has a little bit of an issue sometimes with uh, aggressive sharpening and the way it renders Fuji stuff, so I kind of keep that to a minimum. 
All right, so there's photo number one. Uh, eventually I'll come back and probably crop out this left side, but here's why I don't crop it in the beginning. Um, uh, as I talk with students about Lightroom and what to expect out of it and how to work with it, I call it the two minute editor, meaning uh, any given photo, you probably won't spend more than two minutes most of the time. Uh, so what that means in order to kind of be fast and efficient, my process looks like this. I'm gonna go to the next photo, which is photo number two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just click this previous button down here and that's gonna apply all the edits from the photo before. So it gets me in the ballpark um, and it lets me decide at this stage again, okay, do I wanna keep this photo or do I wanna zero it? Uh, which would take it out of the sort, it turns off the five star rating and it would have one less photo in the rated view. Uh, it doesn't delete the photo. Uh, I, hard, I hardly ever delete photos unless they're out of focus or pure accidents from Lightroom. I just am a digital pack rat. So um, this gets me started. I'm going to keep this photo and then I'm going to hit the arrow key and go to the next photo. And then again, what I'm going to do is do the previous just to get me started. Now I could uh, copy and paste settings. Uh, it's a couple extra keystrokes. Uh, again, for me, this method works. I'm kind of used to using it. So um, yeah, it, it's your mileage may vary. You may think this is crazy go nuts and that's all right. So the part of the reason I don't crop my photos first is because when I'm using the previous button, it copies every setting from the, the photo that is previous, including crop or any masking or spot removal, things like that. So I don't do that at this stage. What I'm doing is applying an edit quickly, looking for a moment at the photo to see if that gets me into liking the photo more or being sure that that photo is a photo to uh, click zero on, which would remove it from the rating sort. All right, so I'm gonna keep going through these. Again, I'm gonna, I'll probably speed this process up and um, so you won't have to watch all, however long this is gonna take, probably 10 minutes. So, all right, see you in a few minutes. pause here for just a minute and just uh, I, I kind of like having a 300 millimeter lens sometimes you can read error screens showing up in office windows uh, so yeah it's both abstract minimal and street photography it's kind of a triple threat here all right back to my sword So after this second pass where I've applied the, used the previous button to apply edits uh, to get me started anyway, get me in the ballpark for this group of photos, uh, I went from 92 photos to 78. It's, it's still too many. There's some duplicates and some uh, other photos that I probably will end up not using in the video, but um, this is uh, again a process. And one of the things I like about using this process again is I'm looking at the photos multiple times. I'm seeing uh, kind of the story of all these photos and maybe how they fit together and which ones maybe don't fit as well. So uh, that's what I enjoy about doing multiple Multiple passes through this. Uh, my next step would be to go through this whole batch of photos again and uh, fine tune the edits and make some more uh, zeros uh, ratings instead of five star to remove them from the sort. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, again, I'm not going to show all of it to you. Uh, I've pretty much quickly outlined my general process and now it's a matter of fine tuning uh, each of the developed settings to fit the photo itself best rather than just kind of a quick previous, almost like a preset uh, use to get me in the ballpark. So uh, remember, if you ever use presets, you always got to go back and apply uh, settings changes to the specific photos because presets only work the way they work on the photo they were created on. So uh, again, I'm going to go back to photo number one, start my journey again through this. And uh, what we'll do then at the end is I'll walk you through my export process, the settings and philosophy behind that. And then uh, away we go. So hang on for that. I'm almost done here. 
So now as I'm going to go through the photos, what I'll do is I'll now apply uh, kind of more local edits. So that includes cropping, any uh, spot removal or or other uh, selective edits to the photos. So uh, I'm going to start with photo number one. And we're going to make a crop, uh, get rid of that little corner blob of something that's not quite helpful and just kind of crop and adjust this eyeball taste that looks good. Uh, again, I'll probably come now and maybe make some other edits, but uh, I'm not exactly sure what. Sometimes I visit a photo four or five times before I'm done with it. Uh, and it, you know, it's again, this is my process. Uh, I, I like, I call it kind of dancing with the photos, going back and forth and using the edits on one photo to inform uh, an edit on another photo. Uh, it's, it's, it's a non-linear process, but it works really, really well for me. So uh, I'm gonna go uh, through some of these photos. I'll show you a few of them. Uh, and uh, then we'll go from there. So uh, this photo, I'm gonna turn up the highlights and whites a little bit, bring up uh, a little bit more contrast and jam here. Uh, what do I want to do with exposure? Well, maybe go just a little brighter. Yeah, sometimes you have to whisper when you talk to your photos, just so you know. Uh, this photo, when I did the previous, I applied a white balance that was way too blue, but I kind of like the direction it's in. So I'm just going to take the temperature slider and go a little less blue. Um, again, my, the, my editing style is not to uh, edit for a correct exposure or correct color. Uh, it's for uh, generally uh, to nudge in an emotional direction to a nudge into uh, an idea of responding to a photo. I'm not trying to duplicate what it looked like. I already saw it. I'm trying to interpret what I felt or thought or uh, want other people to see in the photo. So that's my kind of general philosophy for photo edits. Uh, and uh, yeah, I know this is wrong. Uh, this is not the right color balance. So if I go to the temperature slider and reset it, uh, well, actually that is right. <laughs> so, and the tint would be uh, right about there. So I, I tend to nudge things a little bit uh, again into the blue. Uh, I'll maybe increase exposure just a little bit, get away from some of the moodiness, show a little more of the detail. Uh, so yeah, there we go. That'll work on that photo. This photo, I will probably just pull the highlights and whites down a little bit, maybe increase contrast, see what dehaze does. On stuff like this, dehaze can be really cool to bring out uh, textures. Uh, almost adds a 3D kind of feel to the, this stuff, which I kind of like. Uh, similar here, I'll probably add a little more dehaze. Again, brings a little more crunch in. I really like this orange, this brightness of this orange and the way it's kind of shifted a little bit from color accurate to this tone of orange and then how it uh, plays well against this uh, blue in the background here. So I like that. The rose, I really like how moody this edit turned out. Here's the before. I really like how moody that is. Um, it fits the day. Uh, and again, that's what I'm going for. Um, trying to decide if I want to crop this to maybe more of a, a, a center alignment. So let's see what that looks like. I kind of like that, a more symmetrical alignment. Yeah, that works pretty well. Let's get the something like top and bottom just a little bit. We don't have to be exact. There we go. Something like that. Yeah, that works. So I'm going to do that same process through the rest of the photos. I'm not going to, again, uh, record all of this. We'll skip ahead to the end in a few minutes where we do an export. So, all right. So once I've gone through my second or third pass through all the photos again, uh, now I have, I'm down to 59 photos. So I've reduced the quantity by a few more. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this export right now uh, so I can show you the process. But when I'm done, I'll probably have a few less photos in the final, final, final edit. So uh, let me go ahead and show you the export process and then we'll do a wrap up here. Here's an, before I do that, here's an example of what I mean by uh, it's fun to go through photos multiple times and really beneficial. For example, in this photo, I've looked at it four or five times, but until I was just now looking at it, I didn't see this lady's head right down here in the bottom right. So I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not yet. I haven't made a final, final decision, but 
I think it's kind of fun. It's kind of like a bonus Easter egg. So uh, looking at your photos multiple times has many, many advantages. So let's do export and then we'll again wrap this up. So uh, I am in the collection that has my photos in it, uh, which in this case is the previous, uh, previous imports collection. So I'm going to do command A to select all those. And then uh, I'm going to go to, I switch to the library modules. This is how I teach students because then you have the export button down here in the lower left. So I'm going to click on export uh, and I have my export set up to uh, function the way I want. Uh, what I do is uh, I don't generally do file renaming. Uh, I don't do video here. Uh, file settings, I leave everything alone except for the size, the quality setting, uh, which by default in Lightroom is set to 60. I set it to 90. Uh, I find 90 to be a good compromise of really good image quality, but uh, efficient file size. If you set this to 100, yes, you're going to get the best image quality uh, from a technical standpoint. But for most of us mere mortals and certainly uh, non-photographer types would not see a, a quality difference between a setting here of 100 versus 90. Uh, plus, it saves you a whole bunch of file size. Uh, it's usually about 60 to 70 percent uh, of the 100 uh, percent file size, sometimes even 50 percent, half as half as large. All right, next thing I do is image sizing. Uh, I resize these to fit. Um, because these photos are going to end up in a 4K video, I do uh, keep my longest dimension to 4,000 when I resize. Uh, again, this is kind of a good compromise of uh, folks can see enough detail, uh, for example, on Flickr where I post the photos uh, for larger viewing, uh, but it doesn't uh, take up quite as much space as the full size, which is a little over 6,000 pixels on the long side. So that's my settings. Uh, all I got to do now is choose my location. So I click on choose and then I have an exports folder for all of this stuff. So for my use, I have a top level exports folder, uh, LR exports, and then I have my exports for uh, this year, this collection of photos. This is going to go into Bellevue and a new folder in there for the date, which was uh, 0217. And then I'll click create on that, then click choose. Uh, all my settings are good. Uh, and then I'll click export. That's, it's just that easy. Uh, I'm going to let it finish the process. We'll fast forward through this. Uh, the export duration will vary depending on obviously how many photos you have. Uh, if it, in this case, it's converting from RAW to JPEG. So that takes a little extra time and uh, computer power. So uh, once that is all done, I'll do a wrap up here uh, uh, with some final thoughts on Lightroom. So I hope you enjoyed that process. Hope you maybe got some new ways to think or strategize about how to organize and approach the organization process, how to approach a, an editing process. Um, again, I think the specifics are less important than uh, having a strategy and idea be intentional with your edits about where you want to take them. Uh, another thing I, I like about this process as it has evolved for me is, again, as I mentioned, I see each photo at least three, four, five, six, seven times, uh, at least of the ones I've selected on the first pass. So it gives me a good look and a, a couple opportunities to say yes or no, or how does it fit in with the photos around it. So. So for me, the editing process is really, really important from a couple standpoints. First, uh, the, the first edit happens as you're choosing which photos you want to make develop edits to. So that's edit number one. And then edit number two is fine tuning that list of photos you're currently working on and reducing uh, maybe the no total number of photos there, plus making the color and exposure and uh, emotional content if you want. Uh, kind of edits to your photos is uh, the final way to finish and put your own personal voice and style onto the photos. And I really enjoy that process. Uh, again, I hope you've learned a few things. If you have any suggestions on uh, specific approaches or strategies you use in editing your photos, uh, please those add those to the comments below. I really appreciate that. Look forward to conversation. Uh, if you have any suggestions, tips, things uh, you think other people should know about in their editing process, I'd uh, also appreciate that down below. So uh, I hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you in uh, future videos. If you have any video suggestions, 
That's another thing you can leave in the comments below and I'd be glad to consider that. So uh, until we meet again in a future video, uh, stay safe, stay well, and have fun creating photos. Bye for now.